All right, today we're talking about MLB's attendance and ratings decline, an ongoing problem that is getting worse. There was an article in June discussing the attendance problem, as well as a video from a YouTuber called Forgotten Places. Link in the description for both of those. I wanted to wait a month to see if the situation improved, and I'm sorry to say it hasn't. Both the article and the video give some good reasons as to why it may be happening. I've got some additional reasons, and I wanted to include the ratings decline as well. If you're only looking at attendance, it's not clear whether people are losing interest in baseball or in sports in general, or if it's the cost of the game, the economic situation, or something else. First, a little background on recent attendance figures. 2007 was the record year for attendance when the league averaged 32,785 fans per game over the season. This followed the opening of several new stadiums across the league, and it was less than a decade after the home run chase, and it was the fourth straight year attendance had increased. Attendance dropped a little in 2008 as the recession kicked in. 2009 saw a big drop, partly due to the economy getting worse. Every sports league suffered because of that, but mainly because the two New York teams moved into smaller venues. In 2008, the Yankees averaged over 53,000 fans a game. The Mets averaged just under 50,000, ranking one and two respectively in the league. In 2009, those numbers became impossible. It was at this time that I started to pay a lot of attention to attendance, and I didn't think the drop was a big deal. But in 2010, attendance dropped again, even though the economy was improving and the Twins moved into their new stadium and sold out every game. But my confidence was restored in 2011 when attendance ticked up without the opening of any new ballparks. In 2012, the Marlins started playing in their new stadium, and even though the attendance was far short of what we usually see from the opening of a new venue, it helped to raise the league attendance once again. After that, I kind of stopped paying attention to attendance, but you can see clearly what's happened. Attendance dropped every year from 2013 to 2019. 2020 and 2021 don't count. 2022 is the first normal season since 2019, and we're seeing a big drop in attendance. For the 2022 season going into the All-Star break, the league is averaging 26,123 fans per game. That's down from an average of 28,202 per game in 2019, a loss of more than 2,000 fans at each match, or about 7%. That's going by 2019 numbers at the end of the season. If you go by 2019 average attendance heading into the All-Star break, it's down 5%. Not as bad, but still very concerning. Why is it dropping so much this year? Well, if you look at the trend over the last decade, it should have been expected. We didn't get to see the small declines that inevitably would have occurred in 2020 and 2021. If attendance had decreased 1.5% in each of the last three years, then we're right about where we should be. But should we really have to expect a decline in attendance every single year? No, that's a problem that needs to be looked at. The thing that really sticks out to me when looking at this year's attendance is that 13 teams still average over 30,000 fans a game. That's the exact same number of teams that averaged over 30,000 a game in 2009. But back then, only three teams averaged under 20,000 a game. This year, nine teams are under 20,000. A big difference between the places that support their teams and those that don't. The Oakland A's had 2009's worst attendance at 17,392. In 2022, they again have the worst attendance, at just 8,637. And that's one thing that's really dragging down this year's attendance. The situation in Oakland, where we don't know if the team is going to be there much longer, is a huge turnoff to fans. They need to make a decision, either relocate to Vegas or build a new stadium in Oakland. If they fix that problem, then the overall attendance drop wouldn't be as bad, but it would still be falling. First month attendance was bad, as it usually is. It's still cold in some places in April, and a lot of fans would rather wait till the weather warms up before spending a day at the ballpark. But this year it was made worse by the lockout. For a while there, we didn't know if there was even going to be a 2022 season, and people weren't buying tickets in advance like they usually would. But even then, you can look at month-by-month -month attendance and see that it's just bad all around. The last month of the season, September, usually sees some poor attendance figures too, especially with teams that have no chance in the pennant race. Those numbers might not be so bad this year with the addition of two more postseason teams, but it won't bring the league anywhere near its 2019 numbers. A few reasons given in the Forgotten Places video. Good video, by the way, I agree with almost everything he says there. One is the change in technology. 2007 was the year the iPhone was launched, following shortly after by the explosion of social media. People now have so many new ways to entertain themselves. 2007 may have been the last time averaging so many fans over an entire Major League season was even possible. I'm afraid the record may be permanent. And with the new technology has come a decrease in sports participation. But there doesn't seem to be much correlation between participation and viewership. The NFL, for example, is doing just fine despite a large drop in youth football participation. He also mentions politics having an impact on attendance and viewership, particularly moving the All-Star game out of Atlanta and the Indians changing their name to the Guardians. I don't think moving the All-Star game is having any effect. I think it probably had some effect last season. The All-Star game probably took a hit in the ratings because of it. But fans tend to move on. The NFL lost a lot of fans years ago, but they've rebounded now. The name change in Cleveland may be having some impact, but it's not necessarily political. 
People who've grown up as sports fans in Cleveland have that brand loyalty. Browns, Indians, and Cavaliers have been there for a long time. When the team changed its name, maybe they no longer felt any sense of loyalty to it, especially if they're more of a football or basketball fan. So even if someone agrees with the name change, they might find it hard to support the team with its new name. But I don't know, none of the teams I grew up rooting for ever rebranded themselves in any way, so I don't know how I would react to it. If you're a Cleveland sports fan, let us know in the comments if it's had any effect. Also mentioned in that video is the pace of play, which is the number one reason given when anyone starts talking about MLB's attendance issues. They've been trying to speed up the game and reduce overall game time for years now, without any success. The only way they'll succeed at it is by turning baseball into a totally different sport, so I think they're wasting their time. He also mentions a lack of streaming options. Some teams are so reliant on their TV contracts and some fans are unable to watch their favorite teams play. This comes from old-fashioned thinking. They think only about TV viewers and not about the number of actual fans they have, which will mean more in the long term. One thing he brought up that I do not agree with is reducing the number of games. I did a video about why that's a bad idea last winter. Maybe a reduction to 154 games like it used to be. Then you could eliminate four games in April, four in September, and the average attendance would increase. But then the overall attendance would decrease, resulting in a loss of revenue. And the teams would no doubt make up for the loss by raising ticket prices. Which brings me to my next point. This was brought up in several comments on that video. Some said the economic situation has kept people away from the games this year. That may be true. As I said before, the economy was one reason for attendance declines in 2008 and 2009. Now, with inflation at a 41-year high, it may be having an even bigger impact. In 2009, a lot of people kept the same job, same pay, and were still able to attend the games just as they did before. The recession didn't really affect some people. But now, with the price of everything going up, everyone is affected. And most of us are looking for things to cut out of our budget. But while that could help explain this year's attendance drop, it doesn't explain the annual decreases from 2013 to 2019, when all the economic news was good. Other comments suggested that the increase in ticket prices, as well as everything else you spend money on at the game, has priced out the average fan over the years. That's true, it's getting harder for the average fan to attend games, especially if they want to bring their families with them. It just costs too much for a lot of people. The only option they have is to stay at home and watch the game. But they're not doing that either. There's a reason I wanted to talk about TV ratings as well as attendance. If it were only the cost keeping fans away, then the ratings would still be good. Most people can't afford to attend the Super Bowl, but the event still draws record numbers of viewers at home. But look at the World Series ratings. The five least viewed World Series all came in the last 15 years. The worst two were the last two years. Major League Baseball's got some problems. It's losing fans, not just at the ballpark. They're losing fans, period. For some teams, there's nothing to worry about. Yankees, Red Sox, Cubs, Cardinals, Dodgers, and about a dozen other teams, everything will be alright. But for the rest of them, with the way the world has changed in the last couple decades, maybe we've reached a point where we can't expect a medium-sized city without a storied baseball team to average over 30,000 fans per game through 81 games every year, especially when they're not doing well on the field. Eventually, attendance will bottom out, maybe around 24,000. Some teams will be relocated to cities that'll show more support, even if just for the first few years. A few aging ballparks will be replaced with newer ones, probably with smaller seating capacities, and that'll get more fans out there to experience the new atmosphere. Then we'll see attendance increase again, but probably never to 30,000 again. While they'll do everything to avoid it, contraction is a possibility. Like I said before, for the best known teams in MLB, not much has changed. Attendance is about the same as it was 13 years ago. But some teams that are struggling at the gate might just become unprofitable. And at some point, players' salaries will have to come down. Just last week, Juan Soto turned down a $440 million contract offer. Salary increases can't possibly continue if ticket sales keep falling. So what do you think? Is everything going to be alright? Or do we have to be content with a smaller number of spectators, viewers, and possibly teams? Let us know in the comments. Anyway, that's all for this one. Until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya.